from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and you're watching the Cube and our continuous coverage of Veeam on 2020. It's the Veeam Online version 2020. Of course, we've had a pivot to, to virtual. Bill Largen is here. He's the CEO of Veeam, and Jim Kruger is the Chief Marketing Officer. Guys, I wish we were face to face, but you know this will do. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, the next best thing. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah. Glad to be here. Well, first of all, Bill, I, I got to congratulate you. It's the first time really we've talked. It's a, you know, blockbuster uh, uh, acquisition, inside capital, growth-minded, awesome, you know, private equity. So congratulations on the new role, and you know, best of luck. Hey, well, thanks very much. Uh, greatly appreciated. I've uh, been with uh, been with the team since uh, founding in 2006. So it's uh, well, it's a new role. It's it's a good old it's a good older team that we're very experienced with. Yeah, indeed, you 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 know the the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you know where the skeletons are buried, and you know where to take the ship. So uh, we wish you the best. And then you, you know, and then Jim, I got to ask you. I mean, everybody says, okay, it was a really hard decision to go to, to virtual. You actually had no choice, but maybe the harder decision was, do we postpone or do we go forward? You guys chose to go forward, uh, which I think is the right call. And I also think it seems like you're taking the approach of, you know, we're not just going to try to plug the physical into the virtual. We're going to think about the halo effect and really keep this discussion going. But maybe your thoughts on that pivot to, to virtual. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take us too long to decide and we, we felt, uh, Rather than postponing it and and trying to do a a large event before the end of the year, which is not real really really realistic, uh, we decided to uh, to go with the virtual. And actually, for just a month after, for the most part, after uh, um, what the real event was supposed to happen in Las Vegas. And uh, yeah, we're really looking at it from you know keep, keeping the discussion going with our customers, uh, keeping them updated. We're going to be highlighting some of the, the, the new releases that are going to be coming out, so making some key announcements. Uh, and it actually gives us an opportunity to, to draw in more of the crowd from around the entire globe. I think we have 148 different uh, countries that are represented. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's a, uh, I think a new platform and uh, I think it's working very well so far. So Bill, I, you, know, you came into this, this role <laughs> And immediately you're, you're dealt with a pandemic. And, and I want to sort of talk a little bit about, you know, how you're dealing with that. Um, and we'll get into maybe what you're seeing in, in your business. But, you know, the, in, in a way, there's a silver lining here uh, because it really kind of forces change. Change, as you said in your keynote, is a constant. Uh, but, you know, you might have, you know the business obviously very well, and you might have had some gut feels as to where you wanted to take it. But change is hard, but boy, Everybody has to change now. So in a way, that's sort of a, an accelerant to change. But your thoughts, what was your first move kind of coming into this pandemic? Yeah, coming into the pandemic, it was one of uh, making sure we understood uh, what the issues were, getting people home and in safe working environments. So our big move was, uh, was that some of our team had uh, desktops, so they did not have laptops, which made it a little more cumbersome multi-screen. So it's really a physical activity to have moved these people. So we moved our whole team, 4,300, about 1,300 or so of those people were already, uh, our employees were already working out of their house. Uh, so the big move was let's get them home. Let's make sure they're efficient, good connectivity. And, uh, and with that, we were off and running. I don't believe we missed uh, much of a beat at all, uh, considering we started this Really mid-March, we were finishing our uh, first quarter, which came out uh, right about on plan, which we were really excited about. So it was uh, that was the first move I would say we make. A few more to go, uh, but the big first move. I want to get I want to share some data with you guys. If you bring up the first slide, this, so this is data from our data partner ETR. Every quarter we go out and we talk to customers, and, and this is a survey of over 1,200 uh, uh, end, end practitioners buyers. And there are about 120 or so Veeam customers in there. What I'm showing here is data, the, the gray bar is data from a year ago, April 19 survey. The blue bar is January 2020, and the yellow bar is the April, 9, uh, April 20 survey that was taken right at the height of the lockdown. And, and what this is showing is customers that are spending more by the percentage of those customers that are doing business with, with Veeam. And you can see at the gray, it was 
50 percent. It dropped slightly to January. Now it's back up in, in the height of the lockdown. And so what you, you, you saw is that new adoptions and people spending more, i.e. more than 6% is actually up since uh, the, the pandemic hit. And, and Jim, I, 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 or, or Bill rather, I'd like to start with you. I wonder if this is what you're seeing kind of in your business is a, a little bit of an uptick. Not all businesses obviously are seeing that, but uh, seems like yours is. Yeah, I, our uh, April was uh, up. Uh, just amazingly so, and I think it allowed us to get the transition out of the way at the end of March while also closing the quarter. But yeah, we had a um, we had a double digit gain in April. That was extremely uh, nice way to start out the uh, first month of the second quarter. So that's exactly what we're seeing. Very very positive activity. And you know, um, I think that if we talk about Jim, some of the data that you showed in your keynote. You talked about some of the challenges that your, your data showed. You guys got this, this new survey and we'll, we'll talk about that, the, the data protection report, but what stood out was cyber threat. You saw the number mm -hmm. one challenge that, that came up. And, and I often say that, that the, the lines between security, cyber security and data protection and, and backup and recovery are really starting to blur. You guys aren't known as a cyber company, but increasingly people are thinking about data protection and backup and recovery as part of their overall cyber strategy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and I think, um, you know, from, from our most recent release, uh, version 10, we built in some new capabilities around uh, ransomware protection uh, and cybersecurity. So yeah, I would say those lines are, are, are blurring, but uh, we're definitely not a security company. Uh, although, as you mentioned, a backup definitely pro provides that security and customers want to be able to do you know, scans prior to putting things into production. And that's some of, some of the new capabilities that we've uh, provided in our latest version. Well, I mean, and, and cyber obviously is, is expanded, it's become a board level topic, as you well know, it has been for years. Later on, we're interviewing Gil Vega, who's your, your newly minted CISO. And you're, you're seeing that, that role, you know, expand. It's not just sort of off in the corner, okay, it's IT's problem, or it's the, the security SecOps team's problem. It really is, you know, they, you know the, the tongue in cheek is it's a team sport, but you really have to take a broader view of, of, of cyber, don't you? And especially, Bill, given something that you shared in, in your uh, keynote talk, you shared some IDC data, you know, a 5X increase in zettabytes over a seven year period. I think 33 in 2018 up to 175 in 2025. And I've taken bets that IDC is probably low in that number. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably low. Well, that's what we're seeing. You, you know, you brought up a good point. It, it's Veeam's uh, evolution into a much larger entity and protecting many more customers, well over 375,000 customers. And that's bringing uh, Gil Vega on our uh, CISO. And a major step for us uh, to focus on external and internal uh, threats that exist out there. So a uh, major activity for us in bringing, um, bringing Gil on. So. You're right, our growth, we think that's where our growth, our growth um, continues to evolve is, uh, is we have our customers um, and what we're trying to make sure we do is we protect them, which talk about security, that's a little bit, of, a little bit of that, protect them and then make sure they have access to their data. And same with our employee count, what are we trying to do? And back to the COVID-19 issue, is that we're trying to make sure we protect our employees as well as make them productive in this whole process. But um, uh, the cyber threat is um, clearly playing into the security. Well, Bill, staying on, on, on the COVID uh, mm -hmm. discussion for a minute, you, you talked in your keynote about, there were three things that stood out there. The, the resource management, security and governance, and, and digital transformation, all very relevant in the context of this pandemic. My, my question is, can you add some color as to Veeam's role in those areas? Yeah, well, clearly in the governance piece of it that's built in our product and orchestration and all the product uh, offerings that we have, I think, you know, our 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 primary concern goes does go back to uh, does go back to protecting data and making it accessible. So I I, I mean I think that's where it's um, uh, most common place for us to see our uh, focus has been uh, has been not security as Jim said we're not a security company but it's it's really availability data availability and it's data availability throughout any platform uh, back to the hybrid cloud conversation that we. Uh, we talked about is that is that we want to be uh, that uh, that uh, make make data available over hybrid, hybrid cloud and, it, and I think with uh, the COVID nineteen it's showing that the cloud based activities are going to be more critical 
uh, versus um, in addition to on-prem. So uh, that's um, an answer to that one. So Jim, I want to ask you about something you talked about in the keynote, which is the data protection report. I referenced it earlier. Tell us a little bit more about this, this study. You guys, you guys are like I am, you love data, but, but what was that study all about and what, what were some of the key takeaways? Yeah, so just, uh, just a few months back, so it's uh, fresh off the, the presses. Uh, we um, surveyed about 1,500 uh, uh, IT pros across the world and wanted to just get a good feel for where their head is, uh, what are some of the key concerns they have. Uh, and so we kind of bucketed it into three, three key areas. Uh, one was around downtime threats, uh, which you talked about the, the security uh, and ransomware threats uh, is, is definitely top of mind uh, for customers. Uh, we also um, drilled down a little bit into the move to the cloud uh, and then also digital transformation. Uh, and what's clear is that, you know, I think in the past, you know, people thought that, um, you know, their most important data was the only data that needed to be protected. And we're seeing uh, some compression there relative to, uh, you know, customers thinking they need to, to basically, you know, protect all data. Uh, so um, the, the difference between sort of the critical data and just normal data is really blending together. Uh, and so they're looking to, to drive efficiencies from that perspective. Uh, and, uh, and I think about 49% of the customers are backing up to the cloud today. Uh, so that's a pretty good number. Uh, but that jumps to, I think, around 76% uh, in two years uh, of customers who believe that they'll be using the cloud uh, as a, uh, as um, as uh, for backup, uh, and then on the digital transformation side of things, you know I don't think there's a company out there who doesn't have some sort of digital transformation initiative, uh, but they are struggling a little bit. They're struggling uh, with um, uh, with uh, the resources that they ha that they have, and and uh, those resources being competent to to really take uh, companies in a new direction because a lot of those resources are focused on existing projects and keeping the the business up and running. Uh, so that's a key area that we're that they're looking to like free up resources to focus on digital transformation, and then we get into some of the benefits that they're seeing from that uh, and so forth. So yeah, it's it all, it's a good all around report to really understand the state of the market. I, I want to stay on this survey for a minute if I can, and then have, have Bill tie it into the company strategy. Um, when, one of the other th the things that stood out was one of the the, the blockers, if you will, uh, the customers cited. They said lack of skills, so you know talent mm -hmm. shortage, right? Uh, legacy IT, or maybe that's technical debt uh, as well, uh, and then budget constraints. And so, I mean, you know, it's kind of, those are good blockers for you guys. You, you, you simplify, you know, the old, it just works. Um, you know, you've been amazing at, at maintaining relevance. You're, you know, whatever, a 10 plus year old company, but you know, you're right there with all the upstarts and, and the, the big portfolio companies. And then of course, budget constraints. I was talking to Anton earlier, just, really focused on the economics of protecting data, but maybe you could add some color to those sort of things that the, the customers referenced as, as their challenges to moving forward. Yeah, yeah, so um, you mentioned one big one, which is skills. Uh, so I think uh, tr training and education is definitely certainly one of them. Uh, I think from, from Beam's perspective, we, we definitely help in all of those areas because uh, our, our solution is easy to use, uh, easy to manage, easy to deploy. Uh, and so when you look at the resources in comparison to some of the legacy solutions that our customers have, they're typically able to save a significant amount on the budget side and significant amounts on the resources. They just don't simply don't need as many people uh, to, uh, to operate uh, a Veeam uh, backup solution. So they can redeploy some of those resources into other areas. Uh, which uh, which has been definitely an, an attraction to them. And you mentioned the IDC data that Bill talked about, but that's one of the reasons if you look back in the second half of 2019, we actually grew three times as fast as the market average. Uh, I think mainly because of that. And a lot of people are switching from their legacy over to uh, to Veeam because, because of those reasons. Yeah, so, so Bill, I want to tie that into company strategy. You guys have been sort of um, unapologetic about the core, which is backup. And it's kind of, you know, obviously recovery is, is part of that. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of discussion around data management, trying to sort of, you know, expand the notion of the TAM and you guys obviously participate in that as well. But it's sort of three things, protect, manage and transform. It was some of the things that you guys talked about in, in your keynote, but the core is protect. 
You're all about backup, recovery, data protection. You know, the examples at, 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 at GNC, for example, and some of the other keynote uh, discussions were all about protecting some of that core data. But then you get into management, which is that sort of TAM expansion, if you will, and then the transform. You know, I think we, we, I think we get the, the protect pretty well. It's the manage and transform that sometimes is a little bit more opaque to people, but I wonder if you could sort of add some, some texture to that. Yeah, well, we, we've always had a very, uh, our focus has been on the protect side and the uh, manage transform is uh, key pieces that we've added on uh, over the time period. So we want to play in that bigger cam market, that bigger market, that uh, uh, cloud data management market that's this 30 plus billion dollar marketplace. So I think you'll see, um, and that's where we've, where we've expanded with those, those 365, Office 365, our, our protect uh, category. Um, so it is one of um, moving on up into that, but we will stay uh, with uh, that core piece of our business on the protect side. It's extremely important to us. We stay focused. It's allowed our development team to stay focused and bring forth products that mm, we, we believe are superior to any of our competitors and, uh, and we can continue to move that way. So, Bill, I mean, Veeam has always been known for punching above its weight class. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the very clever naming of the company, renowned parties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now, you're a top dog now. So uh, maybe the strategy is to continue to punch above the weight class, which would be, which would be a great thing. Although you're now a mainstream, you know, 375,000 customers, you're adding at a very, very rapid pace. You're a big dog now. What, 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 what can we expect going forward from me? Well, well, you know, a big, a big piece of our change was our universal uh, licensing. So we want to make uh, those licenses portable, take them with you, be able to use them in, in a different, uh, in different settings. So I think uh, we'll work on uh, always punching above our weight. That was really started with our founders, uh, Ratmer Timoshev and Andre Baranoff. We uh, clearly were number one. People might not have believed that in the beginning, but we uh, grew right to it. So I think you'll see us with more product uh, innovation in that space and, um, uh, and, and working very aggressively to uh, take command of the multi-cloud environment. Well, you know, your business practices have always been pretty uh, leading edge and forward thinking. You mentioned the flexibility and from licensing, you know, that's something that, you know, you're, you're known for. Even partners, when I talk to your partners, they say, oh yeah, you, you know, Veeam has made it very simple for us to do business. Um, not worrying about so much about who gets paid where, they've sort of made that transparent. So you get, you get very high marks for that. And so there's a, you know, you're known for your tech, you're known for the products, but there's also some innovation on the, on the business model side as well, isn't there? Ab absolutely, our partners, uh, a significant number of partners have been with us a long time. Uh, we do like to make sure that everybody in that uh, distribution channel, and we are two-tier distribution, uh, makes good profitability. And, and keeping it simple becomes more challenging. I think the larger you get, uh, we work very hard at making it simple. And uh, it takes uh, some time, a little bit of um, iteration for us. One of our core values, innovate and iterate, is to, to make it simple and to keep it that way. But we want our partners to be comfortable working with us and making good economics and knowing that we're going to bring, uh, we're going to bring that roadmap of products uh, into them when we get our products ready and they are the products in the marketplace that uh, you put us in, put us in any, situation in the lab, uh, we're going to work. We're going to work first time. We're going to work well for them, so. Uh, Jim, I wanted to ask you about some of the customers that you referenced uh, in the keynotes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned G GNC, you guys showed a video of that. It was pretty cool. It was interesting, uh, Hero Motocorp, they, I think they call it, they, they don't call themselves a motorcycle company, but that's essentially what they are. Right. And, then, and then IBM Cloud it was really interesting to see them in there. I mean, IBM is a, a partner, their, their customer, I guess, or their competitor yeah. on one side of the house. So that was kind of an interesting example. Some of the customer takeaways you can share. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you look at GNC, uh, you know, some of the things that they referenced was, uh, you know, a, a six-figure ROI over, over a three-year period. Uh, and again, that was one of the key drivers as to why they went, went with Veeam, again, just more efficient. Um, and uh, yeah, Hero Motocorp, uh, very interesting. They're the world's largest uh, manufacturer of of two wheel two wheel vehicles, and they they do produce a 
a motorcycle every two seconds. Uh, uh, they produced over 90 million. So they're a, a large organization. I think they have close to close to 10,000 employees. Uh, and um, BJ Sethi, who is who is their CIO, among other things at their company, um, uh, you know, he, as as you heard, he he talked a lot about uh, how they're managing through COVID-19. And he really is a big believer that number one, you got to take care of your people and make sure that they're safe and make sure that they're set up so that they can work from home and so forth. Uh, but then also really planning for not just managing through uh, the crisis, but also preparing for recovery, uh, which uh, which is really important. That was some of the advice that that uh, that he gave, of course, to to to, uh, to the attendees at Beam, which which I think is really good advice. And then IBM Cloud has has been yeah they've been a, a great partner uh, and a customer for for quite some time. We're working very closely with them uh, as you know backup as a service. Uh, they're leveraging kind of the full suite of, of Beam products. And uh, getting great traction, and as as we saw from some of the data, uh, the backup as a service is going to continue to grow and be a, be a great opportunity for both IBM and uh, Beam working together. Well, it's guys, an exciting time for you. I mean, I like many people. I first bumped into Veeam at a V mug. Who? Ah, that was you know years and years and years ago. And to watch your ascendancy has been uh, pretty astounding. Great products, uh, very well run company, uh, good vision and just awesome customers. So, so Bill, you know, you're on deck. When, when we get to 2030, you know, <laughs> what do you want this to look like? Uh, well, Veeam ought to be multi, multi-billion by 2030. That's a long way out. Yeah. It'll be interesting in the transformation that is made and we'll see what happens really globally with um, the whole work from home, uh, how that moves, how office space plays into it product innovation and delivery. We think we're at the forefront back when we started in the virtualization space back in 06 and uh, brought forth some really creative project products. I think we'll, uh, we'll continue to, to continue to see that. So what's 2030 bring? Yeah, multi-billion and we're going to continue to add employees throughout the world. We've got over 4,300 employees, as I mentioned, keynote uh, that are in a you know, multitude of countries. And uh, it's just an absolute um, thrill to be part of them and, um, and uh, help, uh, help us work as a, uh, a family organization and building and bring good products. Well, we really had a, a great deal of fun following Veeam and, and participating in the Veeam on and really appreciate you guys having us here at the, uh, the, the digital event. So thanks guys for coming on and, yep. uh, and sharing your insights. Great. Yeah, thank thanks you Dave, appreciate it. Thanks, uh, and thank you for watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of Veeamon 2020, the virtual digital version. Keep it right there, we'll right back, right after this short break.